I am given to understand that the TEDx Amrita series of uh, talks tries to pinpoint research agendas on issues that have significance to large sections of the society. In this context, no subject can be more befitting for a series like this than agriculture. Why? For one, agriculture addresses one of the most basic needs of all of us, the need to eat. Second, agriculture contributes substantially to our economy by way of nearly 16% of our GDP and more importantly, it helps more than 50% of our population find sustenance. India's research priorities in agriculture sector are governed by three factors. The first one is the need to enhance productivity. India today is 1.3 billion country and by 2050 our population is expected to reach 1.6 billion. This means we will have to produce at least 60 to 70 percent more food grains than what we are producing today. We will need something like 350 to 400 million tons of grains by every year by 2050. Now this is a daunting task. The second factor that we need to consider is the conservation of our production ecosystems. The total extent of cultivable land in India today is about 190 million hectares and there is very little possibility of stretching it any further. It must be realized that this 190 million hectares of land where we produce around 220 million tons of food grains and lot many other crops is basically low in productivity and has other major challenges also attached to it. For example, the fragmentation of holdings, the small and marginal nature of our majority of farmers, the lack of irrigation facilities for something like 60% of our land, etc. are posing challenges to our production systems. Over and above, climate change today is a reality with gradual increase in temperatures, with a greater concentration of greenhouse gases. We know that over the next few decades, the climatological events like floods, storms, drought, etc. are going to increase both in intensity and in frequency. As a result, it is expected that Indian agriculture will be losing something like 2 to 5 percent of its present productivity levels. Secondly, our GDP contribution to GDP will be again reduced by something like 1.5 to 2 percent every year. This will push the prices up and ultimately result in more than 40 million families being reduced to poverty. We have to conserve our production systems on the face of all these challenges. The third factor that is going to contribute in deciding the research agenda in agriculture is the advent of technology. Advances in modern technology like artificial intelligence, like internet of things, like nanotechnology, like robotics and biotechnology, etc. provide us today with an array of options that can reshape our agriculture like we could never have imagined. Coming to the specifics, the first item on agenda as far as agriculture research is concerned will be crop improvement. Coming to the specifics, the first and foremost item on agriculture research agenda would be crop improvement or breeding of plants for improved performance. It has always been our priority and it will always remain our priority because we are constantly having to reach higher output in terms of our food production. 
crop improvement over the next three decades will have three main goals. One is to develop varieties in major crops with improved productivity. The second is to develop varieties which can perform well under stressed production conditions. As already stated, most of our production systems are increasingly being affected by shortage of moisture and shortage of nutrients. So, in such an environment, considering that most of our farmers are resource deficient, we need to have varieties that can perform well and give a reasonable yield even under marginalized production systems. The third objective for crop improvement will be breeding varieties for speciality features. I am sure you must have heard of uh, golden rice that is rich in beta carotene and can thus help mitigate vitamin A deficiency for millions of our children. Foremost concerns in crop production involve managing the two very critical inputs that is water and nutrients. Water is going to be one of the most scarce resources in future, not only for production but also for human consumption. In agriculture, for both water and nutrient related issues, the research agenda will primarily be focusing on the following items. The first one is developing models of crop weather relationships that can help predict impending weather changes so that farmers can immediately adopt corrective measures. The second aspect will be sensor based technologies that can be placed in soil or on plant and can help the farmer detect moisture as well as nutrient based stresses much earlier than it is possible today. A second stream of technology development will focus on increased use efficiency in case of both water and nutrients. Drip irrigation is one example where plants can be supplied with adequate moisture even while saving more than 60% of water that we might be using uh, if you are following surface irrigation. As far as nutrients are concerned, nano fertilizers are going to be the rule of the day tomorrow. Nano formulations can help release nutrients slowly into the soil to match with the uptake of by plants and also can reduce the requirement of fertilizers by a whopping 40 to 60 percent. A third concern would be development of biofertilizers. Biofertilizers are microorganisms that are capable of assimilating nutrients like phosphorus, nitrogen, iron, silica, etc., and make it available to the plants. They can supplement plant nutrition and thereby reduce the need for chemical fertilizers. A third area of interest would be crop protection. We know that 20 to 30 percent of whatever we produce are lost due to pests and diseases. In order to address these concerns, our farmers normally use synthetic chemical pesticides which have got attendant problems like environmental contamination and health hazards. How can we address this through research? The first point will be early detection of pests and diseases through soil based or plant based sensors that can detect even the minute physiological and biochemical changes in plants following pest infestation or a disease infection. As a result, farmers will be able to adopt remedial measures much earlier than what they are capable of doing today. A second development would be 
again formulations like nano formulations which can reduce substantially the requirement of synthetic pesticides nano formulations that can release pesticides at much slower rates and thus offer a wider window of protection will be a norm for tomorrow another area of interest would be bioprospecting plants for example are sources of a large array of chemicals with the bioactivity many of these compounds like azadiractin in neem and nicotine from tobacco are having insecticidal properties there are thousands and thousands of such compounds which can be extracted and utilized for pest management with appropriate research likewise there are natural enemies both uh, macroorganisms and microorganisms which need to be identified evaluated and utilized for the control of pests and diseases so bioprospecting for effective plant protection solutions is another area of concern and lastly formulations developing eco friendly formulations that can be used in different situations is also going to be a priority area for plant protection research the next area of concern would be conservation agriculture agriculture on one hand is accused of contributing to greenhouse effect at the same time agriculture is looked upon as the one area where we can mitigate the adverse effects of climate change for this we need to improve our carbon footprint by bringing more and more area under green cover by following practices that can improve the uh, soil carbon levels and this is where farming systems that combine trees with field crops with cattle with poultry and so many other components are going to be relevant integrated farming systems that can ensure ecological sustainability with economic viability are going to be attractive or much sought after in the coming days finally there is a question of value addition we know that much of agriculture produce are perishable in nature especially fruits and vegetables and they cannot be held on for long another factor is that our farmers are too resource poor to hold their products when the prices are down often they are compelled to make distress sale of their hard earned crop produce so as to sustain themselves this is where processing and value addition can come into picture processing enables transformation of the primary product into forms that can be stored for long that can be transported for distances and thus enable the farmer to gain more by way of revenue it can also help convert our primary producers into attractive forms as required by the changing tastes of our consumers enhanced quality enhanced variability etc are added features of value added food products institutions in the country have developed a mind blowing array of food products from cereals millets pulses etc that can contribute not only to our health but are attractive to our palate as well in this context also modern technology can play a huge role in quality control in developing new products and also in the management of the supply chain this five areas i believe are going to be the 
predominant focus for agriculture researchers in the coming days. I believe that I have put enough material on the plate to stimulate your thought process.